Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. <coughs> Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya We are studying the Tatpurusha Samasa which is an important type of compounds in Sanskrit. We have said that there are four types of compounds Avyayivhava, Tatpurusha, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva stated in this particular order in the text of Ashtadhyayi. We also said that the Tatpurusha Samasa is explained in the Ashtadhyayi with numerous sutras in comparison with the other Samasas, be it the compound prescription sutras the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras or the Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras or the Samasa Swara Vidhayaka Sutras. We also stated that there are numerous subtypes of the Tatpurusha. The formation of the Tatpurusha compound can be shown in the form of an equation, a simple equation in this manner. We have x plus y, two different entities in terms of meaning as well as word form as well as accent, but they are interrelated. And the speaker of Sanskrit thinks about merging these two entities together in all the spheres. And so the process of compounding happens as laid down by the rules in the Paninian grammar and a new entity emerges and this derived entity is xy and this is one word denoting one meaning with one accent. So there is ekarthi bhava, three features, aikarthya, aikapadya and aikasvarya. Now, in the Tatpurusha Samasa, the entity thus formed, which is xy, has a peculiar feature, namely y, which acts as the head of the unit. And that is why y is shown with bold characters. So when xy as one unit is to be related to any other external unit of the sentence, that relation will happen through y. As we have already said that it is the sentence which is an input of the derivation of the samasa and the output is the pratipadika which again becomes part of a sentence. So y which is the head through which xy will get related to other words in the sentence at the end of the derivation of the compounding process. Those words in which the element like x is interrelated to the other word not through y but independently they are termed as asamartha samasa and exceptions and we have studied asamartha samasa earlier in this particular course. We also said that the Tatpurusha Samasa has got several subtypes. Amongst them we have already studied Vibhakti Tatpurusha. While studying the Vibhakti Tatpurusha we said that the Vibhakti Tatpurusha highlights the fact that the Samartha theory, the theory of compounding 
is based on the Karaka theory. We studied the Vibhakti Takparusha in some detail and now we are studying another very very important subtype of Takpurusha called Karmadharaya. We said that Karmadharaya Samasa is stated in 2.1 from the sutras 2.149 onwards up to the end of 2.1 that is 2.172. <coughs> this entire section is governed by the Adhikara Samanadhi Karanena. So, Samanadhikarana is the core part of the Karmadharaya Tatpurusha compound semantically. And this is what is <coughs> also highlighted in the definition of Karmadharaya as proposed in the Paninian grammar. The sutra is 1242 Tatpurushaha Samanadhikaranaha Karmadharaya Tatpurushaha Samanadhikaranaha Karmadharaya. What this means is that Tatpurusha compound in which the constituents denote one and the same entity as referent is termed Karmadharaya. So that Tatpurusha in which the constituents denote one and the same entity, that means they have co referentiality relation as referent, then such a Tatpurusha is termed. Karmadharaya. <coughs> and the state of being Samanadhikarana is called Samanadhikaranya, which is defined by the tradition in the following line Bhinna pravritti nimittasya, anekasya shabdasya, ekasmin arthivrittihi Samanadhikaranyam. So the words which have different pravritti nimittas, different causes for their usage, they when stand for one and the same meaning, then they are said to be in relation of co-referentiality or samanadhi karanya. In the previous lecture, in this context, we studied the sutra Purva Kalaika Sarvajarat Purana Navakevalaha Samanadhi Karanena. Let us now study the next few sutras dealing with the Karmadharaya Samasa. First, let us deal with Dik Sankhe Saudnyayam 2.150. There are two padas in the sutra, Dik Sankhe and Saudnyayam. So, Dik Sankhe is in the Prathama Vibhakti. What it means is words indicating Dik, that is direction, and number, Sankhya. Since this is in Prathama, the words indicating direction and the number, they will be termed as Upasarjana because of the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. And because of the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam, these words will occupy the initial position of the compound, also known as Purva Nipato. The second word in the Sutra is Saudnyayam. This is in the seventh case in the sense of a name or a term. <coughs> the words continued are sup, sahasupa and samartha padavidhi and also samanadhi karanena with the same referent. And so the overall meaning of the sutra Diksankhe Saudnyayam is the following. Any subanta which denotes direction or number is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subantha when the compound denotes a name or term. I repeat, any subantha which denotes direction or number is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subantha when the compound denotes a name or a term. And this is a Nitya Samasa of a Vigraha type. Here is an example. East Ishukamashami. Now Ishukamashami is the name of a particular place. And when you are referring to the eastern part of it, that part is being referred to as East Ishukamashami. And this is used as a term, as a name of a particular place. 
सो नाउ वी हैव पूर्वा च असौ इशु काम शमी नाउ पूर्वा एंड इशु काम शमी दीज आर टू सेपरेट एंटिटीज हैविंग सेपरेट मीनिंग्स बट इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स दे आर रिफरिंग टू वन एंड द सेम एंटिटीज सो देर इज दिस समानाधिकरण रिलेशन दैट एग्जिस्ट बिटवीन दीज टू एंड सो नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ दिस सेमेंटिक रिलेटेडनेस द कंपाउंड प्रोसेस विल बिगिन एंड ऑफ कोर्स देर विल बी पूर्वा प्लस सू प्लस इशु काम शमी प्लस सू एज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप दिस इज द अलौकिक विग्रह एंड देर विल बी समास सौज्ञा फॉलोड बाय द प्रातिपदिक सौज्ञा एंड देन बोध द सू प्रत्यय विल बी डिलीटेड बाय द सूत्र सुपोधातु प्रातिपदिक यो हो and so we have purva plus 0 and ishukama shami plus 0 and now because these two words are in the relation of samanadhikarana the pumad bhava will take place on the purva pad as a purva pad karya stated by the sutra striya pumat bhashita pumskadanu samanadhikarane striyam apurani priyadeshu 6334 so purva will be reduced to purva its pratipadika form and then purva ishukama shami and we have the guna sandhi taking place purveshu kama shami will be the finally derived compound output which is a saudnya which is the name of a particular place similarly now we have an example where sankhya occupies the initial position so the meaning to be conveyed is seven sages and this is also a saudnya a constellation and some such element so we have sapta rushayah as the laukika vigraha sapta rushayah so now we have sapta plus jas plus rishi plus jas so now we have saptan plus jas plus rishi plus jas and so saptan plus 0 and rishi plus 0 after the alaukika vigraha takes place and samasa saudnya happens pratipadika saudnya happens so supadhatu pratipadika yo applies and so we have saptan plus 0 plus rishi plus 0 and so we have sapta rishi and then we join them together by doing the guna sandhi and we have the word saptarshi which is the name of something <coughs> next we go to an important uh, sutra which prescribes the karma dharaya compound तद्धितार्थोत्तर पद समाहारे च एंड दिस सूत्र इन्वॉल्व कॉम्प्लेक्स डेरिवेशन प्रोसेस देर आर टू पद इन द सूत्र तद्धितार्थोत्तर पद समाहारे सेवेन वन एंड च मीनिंग एंड द वर्ड तद्धितार्थोत्तर पद समाहारे हैज गॉट थ्री कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स तद्धितार्थ उत्तर पद एंड समाहार and we shall study each one of them in some detail in a while the words continued are sup and sahasupa and of course samartha padavidhi and also samanadhikaranena meaning with the same referent and also diksankhye from the previous sutra meaning the words indicating direction and number big sankhya is stated in the prathama vibhakti so they will be termed as upasarjana by prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and by upasarjanam purvam they will occupy the initial position of the compound in the sutra the word tadhitartho uttara pada samahare is in the seventh case which is laying down a general environment condition for the compounds to take compound to take place and the words in the compound are dik and sankhya in the initial position and the samanadhikarana subanta 
in the second or final position of the compound. So the meaning <coughs> of the samasa is the following. Any subanta which denotes direction or number is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta when the compound is made in the following three contexts. Tadhitarthe vishaye, uttarapade parataha, and samahare vachye. In tadhitartha, the meaning of the tadhita suffix is the domain, is the vishaya. When uttarapada is following and samahara is the denoted meaning. So when we say tadhitartha vishaye, what it means is when a tadhita suffix is to be added or when a tadhita suffix is the condition and the environment of the earlier compound. What it means is when the compounding process is becoming an input to adding a tadhita suffix and so this becomes anitya samasa. So the structure of this particular samasa is shown in this manner. There is this subanta and this subanta. They both are related in the sense of co-referentiality. And the important point is that there is this tadhita suffix to be added. So in the environment of this tadhita suffix, these two subantas, <coughs> they are stated to be compounded by this particular sutra. So this tadhita suffix acts as an environment. In a way, we can also say that this samasa is becoming an input for this tadhita suffix to be added and also to be processed. Uttarapade parataha means when an uttarapada follows immediately. So this is also a nitya samasa. This means that the compound is made within another compound. So we have these two subantas which are semantically related because they are co-referential. They get compounded when another subanta follows. That means these two subantas will get compounded and the compound output will be one pratipadika to which will be added one sup. So now we have this compound output subanta followed by this subanta and they will be compounded again and the output generated would be another pratipadika followed by another subanta. So now this sup is to be compounded with the compounded sup and in such a case the earlier subantas they get compounded. So this is a compound within a compound. <clears throat> and this is a very peculiar feature of Sanskrit compounds. We have already seen that the term used for such compounds is Garbha. So Tatpurusha Garbha Tatpurusha, Dvandva Garbha Tatpurusha and so on and so forth. And finally, samahare vachi, when collection is the meaning denoted by the compound. When that is the case, so this is the semantic condition. Then this compound takes place. Now, it is to be noted that there is no semantic compatibility of direction and collection of meanings. And therefore, there is no such compound happening between the words denoting direction and the samahar. <clears throat> Let us now take the examples. First we have the meaning one who is born in eastern room. If that is the meaning to be conveyed, then we have purvasyam shalayam bhavaha as the laukika vakya in which purvasyam shalayam is the laukika vigraha for a compound and bhavaha is another meaning required and stated which will be expressed by a tadhita suffix. So the sutra 42106 prescribes the suffix ya in the sense of bhava and so we have purvasyam shalayam bhavaha where bhava is the meaning 
which becomes the Vishaya for Purvasyam and Shalayam to be compounded. So when <coughs> the suffix Y is added, in this domain, Purvasyam and Shalayam, they get compounded. Purvasyam and Shalayam are related to each other because they are co-referential. They are referring to one and the same entity, one and the same referent. So now we have Purva plus Ni plus Shala plus Ni. Now this is the Alaukika Vigraha of the compound in the domain of Niya, which means Bhava, this is stated by 42106. Now Purva plus Ni plus Shala plus Ni, this becomes Samasa and so it becomes Pratipadika and therefore now Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and deletes both the sups. So we have Purva plus Shala and then this A obviously remains and so we have Purva plus zero plus Shala plus zero plus A. <coughs> now in, at this stage the word Purva which is Purva Pada, the Purva Pada Karya takes place on this word which is Pumvad Bhava and so here Purva becomes Purva it goes back to the Pratipadika form and the, one of the reasons is that they are co-referential and there are some other statements supporting this Pumad Bhava. So now we have Purva plus zero plus Shala plus zero plus A the Tadita suffix. So we get Purva Shala as the compound output in the environment of the Tadita suffix A and then because of this Atadita suffix where you have Y as the marker, this initial vowel becomes Au which is Vriddhi and so we have Tadhitesh Vachamadehe applying and also therefore we have Paurva Shal plus A and then this final A gets deleted because of 64148 and so we get the Tadhita output, Paurva Shala, one who is born in the Eastern room. But in order to derive this Tadhita, we need to first form a compound of Purva Shala. So in the domain of the Tadhita suffix Y or A, the compound has taken place. So this is how Tadhita Arthe Vishaye Samasa happens. This is another example. Now, this is a very famous word and famous name of Kartikeya, meaning is descendant of six mothers. And there is a story which explains this particular term. We need not go into the detail of the story. Let us concentrate on the formation of the Samasa. So we have Shannam Matrunam Apatyam as the sentence and here we have apatyam as the sense in which a tadhita suffix is prescribed in the Paninian grammar. But now in the domain of this suffix explaining this meaning we will have to make the compound of shannam and matrunam. So the alaukika vigraha is shash plus am and shannam and matrunam are referring to one and the same entities. So there is co-referentiality relation and therefore there is samasa that is possible. So we have shash plus am plus matru plus am as the alaukika vigraha in the domain of the suffix an in the sense of apatyam stated by 41115 maturut sankhya purvayaha and so now this samasa takes place, so the pratipadika saudhnya takes place and so the soups get deleted and so we have shash plus matru and a remains as it is and so we have shash plus matru plus a and then because of this a and the marker an a, this initial vowel is lengthened so we have shash plus matru plus a and then we have shash plus matur plus a because of this 41115 
and then this sh is substituted by na, and then we get the finally derived form shanmatura. <coughs> this is the tadhita form derived, where there is the suffix a denoting the meaning apatya. And in the domain of this a suffix, which is a tadhita suffix, we derive the compound in the form of shashmatru in this particular way. So, tadhitarthi vishaye is a complex construction where you have a tadhita suffix which is there as a domain, as an environment and we derive the samasa in this domain. Now, here is an example of the uttara pade tatpurushaha. Uttara pade parataha karmadharayaha tatpurushaha. The meaning is one who loves the eastern room. Purva shala priya yasyasaha. Now, this is a bahurihi compound that is why finally derived. And the word priya is there. Immediately before this word priya, we have the words purva and shala. And they are referring to one and the same entity. So they are co-referential. And so when priya is the word that is uttarapada, we can compound these two words purva and shala. And that is what we do here. So purva plus su plus shala plus su plus priya plus su. This is the bahuri compound that we are deriving within which there is this tatpurusha that we are deriving first. Purva plus su plus shala plus su. So this is first of all called samasa. Then it is called pratipadika. So the subs of this pratipadika, they get deleted by supodhatu pratipadika yoho. So we have purva plus zero plus shala plus zero plus priya plus su. And then there is Pumad Bhava that takes place. So we have Purva plus Shala plus Priya plus Su. And so we have the compound derived Purva Shala in the context of Priya plus Su, Uttara Pade Parataha. And then Purva Shala becomes a Subanta. And then Purva Shala plus Priya plus Zero. And so we get Purva Shala Priya as the finally derived compound output. This is an example where Uttarapada is immediately after and before that the compound takes place. This is a compound within a compound. So this is a Karmadharaya Garbha Bahuvrihi that we derived. And we say that this Bahuvrihi becomes an environment for the derivation of the internal Karmadharaya. <coughs> Similarly, now the Sankhya and the Uttarapada condition. The meaning is whose wealth is five cows. So, Pancha Gavaha Dhanam Yasyasaha. And here we have Panchan plus Chas and Go plus Chas. And they get compounded when the Uttarapada is Dhana, Dhana plus Su. So, then they become Pratipadika. And there we have the samasanta suffix added, namely tach, gora taddhita luki. And so now we have panchan plus chas plus go plus chas plus a plus dhana plus su. And then the sups are deleted. So panchan plus go plus a plus dhana plus su. And now there is a sandhi that, that, that happens. So we have panchan and gava and dhana. And then this na gets deleted. So now we derive panchagava as the finally derived compound output in the context of dhana. So the finally derived output is panchagava dhana, which is a bahurihi compound whose internal constituent is a karmadharaya compound, which is panchagava. And now here is the Samahara, a collection of five bundles. That is the meaning to be conveyed. And so we have Panchanam Pulanam Samaharaha. And so we get Panchan plus Am plus Pula plus Am. And so Samasa Saudhnya happens and Pratipadika Saudhnya 
also happens and so soups are deleted and so we get panchan pula and then this na gets deleted and we get pancha pula as the samasa output now this samasa output in the sense of samahara is also termed as dvigu the sutra is sankhya purvo dvigu so dvigu is part of tatpurusha part of such karma dharaya and now akaranto uttarapado dvigu striya mishtaha is another statement because of which in the feminine there is e suffix that is added so we have panchapula plus e and we derive the final form panchapuli <clears throat> so panchapul plus e and panchapuli is a compound with a number occupying the initial position of a compound such a compound is technically called dvigu by the sutra sankhya purvo dvigu 2152 and by the statement akarantottara pado dvigu striya mishtaha we get the forms like panchapuli to summarize the conditions in which the compound is prescribed over here in this lecture we saw are complex in nature they involve recursive derivations of words where the process of compounding becomes an input and also when a taddita suffix is to be added or another compound is to be derived there is semantically no compatibility between direction and collection so compound is ruled out theoretically in that case and we continue studying the karma dharaya samasa in the next lecture these are the texts referred to and thank you very much